easy. <laughs> Now, if you're thinking of adding floral designs, greenery, a floral crown, I highly recommend you watch further because there's a bit of a strategy to this. The flowers you choose, the colors you mix, the order in which you layer the floral designs can either add or take away from the pet portrait. So in under 10 minutes, I'm going to share my eight master tips for creating this floral designed or boho style pet portrait similar to this one. I created of a chocolate lab puppy and if you wait to the very end of this video I have so much more floral inspiration if you're having trouble coming up with designs and or colors and or flowers that you want to choose and at the end end of this video I have more updates on my print shop my Etsy shop that I'll be launching on August 26 guys that's National Dog Day okay let's get started <laughs> Tip number one is to keep it simple. Choose flowers and leaves you're comfortable painting. It would be such a shame to love your pet portrait, but loathe that crown or the flowers in your portrait. Tip number two, you want a clear and concise sketch. If there's one thing that I've learned about painting flowers is if my sketch isn't accurate, boy, it makes painting it so much more challenging. Tip number three, if you'd like to create a more complex, elaborate crown of flowers and leaves, I know this may be time consuming, but it'll be worth it if on a separate canvas or paper, you test out colors and your design. So that way you're much more confident going into your actual painting. Tip number four, paint the crown at the beginning, but the background first, then the crown second and the pet last. What this does is it helps to create depth. It will save you time having to work your background around those flowers and leaves. This gives you time to focus and figure out whether you like that floral bouquet instead of painting the pet first and then finding that out later. Now, if you're not sure about which colors to use in your floral designs and your greenery that complements your pet, here's some really helpful tips to help you decide. Tip number five. In deciding on color, start with the dog, then the background, and then the floral designs. The colors you decide for the pet will help you choose for the background, which will help you choose for the floral designs. Let me give you some examples. So if you have a light colored pet, choose a dark or medium value background. If you have a dark colored pet, choose a medium or light colored background. Furthermore, you wanna choose colors that complement the primary color of the pet. So if you are painting a yellowish tan dog, you wanna choose a background color that complements the yellows, which would be a violet. That's one way to go about that. And I would choose a dark or medium value violet because it's a light colored dog. Now we can decide on the flowers and the leaves. So whether you're doing a crown or flower designs in the background, they will be touching that background. That means you don't want the leaves or the flowers to be too dark that they get lost in the dark violet background, going back to my example, or too light that they blend in with the yellowish tans of the dog. So that leads me to tip number six. To create this balance in values that's at peace with the pet and the background, not conflicting with it, choose a range of values for your leaves and flowers. Adjust the amount of yellow and blue that you add to your leaves when mixing up those greens. Create a range of greens and apply them based on the darkness or lightness of the background and pet. For example, I have more yellowish green leaves over top the pet because of how dark brown this chocolate lab is and much darker bluish green leaves on the upper left corner of that crown over top that light colored background. Also, if you notice, I chose flowers with very dark centers and light colored petals. Now, what would you do if you're working with a pet that has multiple different colored markings, like an Australian Shepherd, for example? Tip number seven, for pets that have lots of stripes, spots, and markings, 
keep the floral designs simple and color and design. In this case, I recommend just a single or at max two colored background and maybe two to three different colored flowers and leaves. To prevent overcrowding the painting, you wanna draw attention to the pet, not floral designs that take away from it. Now, before I move on to step eight and all the other inspiration, if you'd like to learn how to paint your dog in acrylics and or cat, I've created what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. Here, I share my 12-step pet portrait painting process in detail with guides included. I have my creative color guide going over all my color secrets. For those of you wanting to make a part-time or even full-time business from your pet portraits, I have a pet portrait commission course and I'm currently working on a master animal fur painting guide. Not to mention over 200 therapeutic pet and wildlife acrylic painting tutorials. So if the masterclass would bless you or a friend, I have links to the masterclass down below. And now for tip number eight and lots of colorful floral pet portraits and wildlife paintings. Be open to creating more loose style abstract flowers while making that pet portrait more realistic and detailed. Here's a list of flowers that you might wanna try. They're quite simple, easy to abstract, like poppies, tulips, lilies, pansies, hydrangeas, and sunflowers. Really creatives, don't overthink this. Play with colors, play with textures. I mean, nothing brings a pet portrait or wildlife painting to life more than colorful, cheerful floral designs. All right, and finally, some print shop updates. Trust me, this is related, but I moved my daughter downstairs into Zachary's room. For one, it was so hot upstairs, not only because our AC broke and we had to replace the entire thing, but also because our insulation up there, up here, is not so good. But it's a blessing in disguise because now I have more room to lay up my prints to print them instead of always being on the carpet doing my scans and the Photoshop edits in my tiny little loft art room. So next I'll be moving my tables and my printers and my scanners into that larger room. So I recently finished this Bengal kitten piece using colored pencils and Copic markers. I just scanned it. I not too long ago bought the Epson V600 scanner. It's been working beautifully. Then I'll upload it to Photoshop. I recently learned how to use Photoshop thanks to my sister-in-law. Now I've had my business flyer ready for quite a while. These are marketing tools that I created with the help of Vistaprint. And here's an example with a print in its sleeve with a backboard. I have a certificate of authenticity that I'll fill out with each print. And I'll also include a little freebie sticker with each print. Now I want to tell you that I'm offering two different types of paper. The top is the premium photo luster paper and the bottom tiger is the Epson premium semi-gloss paper which I'm more keen to because the colors are a little bit more saturated with that paper. Now I think many of you know I've offered prints in the past but I've struggled a bit with imposter syndrome and also feeling like my prints weren't top-notch quality. But after taking a few Skillshare classes, learning Photoshop, updating my scanner and my printer, I feel much more confident and hopefully get more foot traffic on Etsy. All right, creative, so thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. Bye.